This is Lemons Car Spotting. You post to Instagram with the hashtag Lemons Car Spotting. We pick the hooptiest. They are so incredibly terrible. And which one we want to become a real Lemons build. It does car-like things. We've been pushing for one of those in Lemons too, and those are very affordable. Hey, it is Lemons Car Spotting with Nick and Eric. We look at 10 cars that you guys have tagged with Lemons Car Spotting on Instagram, and we pick a hooptiest, and we pick a Lemons build for every week. That's the car we want to see turn into a real Lemons race car. That's right. And, uh, of course, we have our patented method. By the way, I'm in a new locale. This will probably be the first video in my yeah. new place. Still moving there, uh, as you can see. But, uh, yep. Yeah. Richard Nixon, right there. So, uh, welcome to the new YouTube background. Uh, anyway, uh, patented method, of course. T- Nick will tell me when to stop. My left hand representing the lemons build, the car, and what would be picked, and the right one, the car that is the hooptiest. And Nick will tell me when to stop. Stop. That's my left hand, <laughs> and right. so Nick will choose the lemons, car, the car All we right. most want to see out of this set to be built for lemons. Yeah, which, let's face it, that's the whole point, right? Yeah, right? Go lemons racing. And Ooh. why not go lemons racing with something like this? Oh, man. <laughs> Oh, man, this is like the heart of the Chrysler malaise era, which, you know, they were doing big things, both literally and figuratively during that time. Right. Yeah, there's uh, I, uh, boy, they might have phased out the 360 by this point. So it's a 318, I'm sure, with three on the tree, maybe even a slant six, but probably not in the New Yorker like this one. Uh, well, this wouldn't have had a three on the tree manual. It would have been on a, a three on yeah, the tree uh, <laughs> torque flight or whatever. The torque flight, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah. Column um, shifted. But uh, whew, half Landau roof, opera window, wire wheels, uh, kind of a great color for the era and incredibly poorly parked in the handicap space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, and it looks like it's got the uh, covered headlights that have failed to retract, um, <laughs> right. you know, with with the covers in place. I mean, this thing's got serious road presence. Um, yeah. I mean, this is the downsized. I believe Chrysler was 77 when they officially downsized uh, their yeah. their cars to, you know, normal boat size instead of the land yacht. But uh right. Uh, boy, there's a lot happening here. And I, you know, I'd also like to note that in the background, its spiritual successor, the Chrysler 300, is over there behind it. That's right. And, you know, Chrysler being Chrysler, is it possible that this car, there was like no middle step between this and the, you know, whatever that is, the 2000? three chrysler 300 or whatever um you know as far as big giant rear drive cars uh i guess they would have had like the weird cab forward uh intrepid concord uh full-size car in between but uh yeah yeah Yeah, there was front wheel drive stuff they eventually phased these out in 88 89 something like that lord it's so late to be driving around (laughs) it It looks like it is yeah (laughs) All right, next up. Oh, man. God. Is that a Monte Carlo? I, I think it's an old, what was the old version of the Monte Carlo? The G uh, body? The Cutlass, yeah. The Cutlass, Cutlass yeah. 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 Um, well, we've said many times, uh, you know, the G body is one of, if not the best aged design from general motors from that period um i don't think they did it intentionally but somehow uh (laughs) the design actually looks pretty good still i mean you know maybe not quite in this form but right uh, right. you know yeah i i the two cars that most look like a car to me are the g-body early 80s g-body and the Datsun 510 like those are just what a, right. a car should right like. right 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 like yeah if you were to go into the the uh the the generic store and you bought car though that's yeah. what it would be i'd put a volvo 240 on that list as yeah well. yeah um, and then you would need a sports car which would probably be like a similar era camaro you know? <laughs> yeah sort like of a vaguely way 80s car yeah. um this 
I mean, where is this photo taken? This has the uh, the the strange crossover of indoors and abandoned. Like usually, you don't get those two together. <laughs> um, uh, McPherson, you know. Kansas, is the tag on it. So yeah. I mean, there you go. Yeah, uh, boy, uh, these do okay in lemons. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, some of them usually you throw the old three hundred seven out after it blows up. Right. And you put some kind of truck small block in it and yeah you know the moldy carlo in the south has a 350 and uh you know oh, unplugged my earbuds there and and a tra- an automatic transmission and one gauge and they have won races with it yeah so, i mean yeah yeah kind of the uh i don't know it's fine. They're what's, great. What's their one gauge? Is it oil pressure or fuel? It's oil pressure. Oil pressure. Yeah. They have a giant oil pressure gauge right that's in front it. of the driver. That's it. <laughs> yep. See, that's all you need. All these people out there with your iPads, telemetry, and whatnot. Yeah. All right. Oh, baby. Yeah, there it is. The uh, Pinto, unless it's a Bobcat. Uh, that's got to be a Pinto. That's a late one, too. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um. Well, what is there to say about Pintos and Lemons? They're not bad. I mean, the one that burst into flames in sort of a comical way, notwithstanding. Um, They, I mean, with that little 2.3 four-cylinder Ford is a ubiquitous motor. Obviously, they continued to offer it in Rangers and whatever else. Uh, Parts are available. They're decently reliable. Power is okay. It's adequate. Um, Pinto is definitely one of those cars when you talk about generic, when you talk about a lemon, like Pinto is top of the list, Vega's up there. But of all of those sort of very stereotypical uh, lemons cars, Gremlin's also on there, the Pinto's the best as an actual real car. Um, Yeah. You know, the exploding thing, you know, that's, come on, it's blown out of proportion. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, (laughs) this is a good, (laughs) good pun there. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do like the uh, the uh, the hub covers. Yeah, that. the dog dishes are good on this. Yeah, it gives it that sort of uh, f- like fleet. You know, this is like the uh, the government um, issue yeah. version. Um, yeah, I yeah, like it. it. It's easy to think of like a uh, man. The most generic government agency just had a fleet of this exact car in white, uh, you know, National Weather Service or something. <laughs> right, right, right. Except we know for a fact that the, that the National Weather Service actually had tempo. Tempos, yeah. <laughs> Which brings up, you know, not to dwell on this too long, but, you know, uh, in the the, uh, the caption it says it's an 80, which means that this butt up against the Ford Escort in 81. Yeah. And, man, whew, Talk about a quantum leap forward in technology and still being a piece of crap. Right, right, right. Yeah, I mean, like, if you look at, the like, just the overall design and configuration of a Pinto, I mean, that's, like, a borderline 60s vibe. And then the Escort, front drive, all that stuff is still relevant today. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it's that's, like, one of those things where um, they, they have those lists, like, BuzzFeed lists, where, like, two people that you wouldn't think were alive at the same time were alive at the same time, you know, like <laughs> yeah. 50 cent and Charlie Chaplin. Yeah. So like, the, you know, this, this is the automotive equivalent of that, that this actually yeah. crossed over with the escort. Oh man. Uh, that, is, that is a lemons world for another day. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cars that you didn't think existed at the same time. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. All right. Next up. Oh, oh yes. Uh, what in the Houston, Texas is happening now? <laughs> Is that a town car? Yeah, I believe so. Um, I mean, the only real disappointing thing is it doesn't have the elbows poking out. Um, I mean, it's it's got the Continental kit. You got to recline the fifth to pop trunk and all that, but no elbows. So um, work left to be done. Yep. Yep. Trunk popping too. It looks like there's a giant rust hole on the door, but that yeah, what is a that? Or <laughs> it's either that or like a meteor strike. <laughs> yeah. uh, I, the wheels also look like the uh, the Walmart 18 inch specials, right, uh, right? But I'm not sure what's happening there. Uh, my grandparents had town cars for years and years and years. As farmers, you had to have the nice car to go to church, uh-huh. and, uh, and they had the town car, sure, like this of the boxy yeah, yeah. variety. Yeah, so. yeah. 
Well, this is, yeah, I mean, this is the Argyle from Die Hard Edition town car, which you know, <laughs> right. it's got road presence. And I'm going to give the dude a benefit of the doubt. These are just like some rollers that he needed to like move the car around. He's got, he's got an order in from Texan wire wheels and uh, <laughs> all will be right in the world soon. Enough. That's right. All right. Oh, we've got many, uh, many choices here. Oh, boy. Well, <laughs> I can tell you already who the black sheep in the family is. Yeah. Boy, <laughs> what is going on with the one in the front there? It's got yeah, like half of a what, roof like stuck into the trunk. I wonder. Well, it looks like it might be like a removable hard top from something like a Spitfire. Yeah. It's yeah, just like sort point. of wedged in there to store it. Um, I don't think it's part of the uh, Volvo up there, but uh, no. I don't know. Um, now, uh, have we seen yeah. an example of all of these in a Lemons race? Obviously, there's Anton and uh, Fjord Mustang Racing's uh, Volvo 544s. Uh, yeah. We've seen Spitfires for sure. Have we seen a Amazon? I mean, not a wagon, but I think we've seen a regular Amazon. Yeah, we have. Yeah, the the tuna chuckers had a that's right had an Amazon. I think. Yeah. There was another one on the West Coast that might have been a 122. Right. Maybe right. That's, yeah, that's right. I don't yeah, know. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we, we haven't had a wagon. We had two wagons like this on a recent Lemons rally, both of uh -huh. them white in the same color, maybe the only color that they sold them in. And one of them was a 121, which was uh -huh. a Europe only wagon that somebody imported here for some uh -huh. weird reason. I don't know. What's the difference? I don't know, but it blew up before <laughs> yeah. it even got to the I was gonna start. Say, it probably <laughs> like, you know, the American version had a 1.8 or whatever. And the, um, the European version was like a comical, like 850 CC yeah. engine or something. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, although I will say the Volvo B series engine, uh, pretty rugged. I mean, for, by, especially, you know, it, it's a, it's an engine that you can actually still use sort of as a modern car, sort of, sort of um, yeah. that comes from the 60s, which can't be said for a lot of other things, including but not limited to the Triumph Spitfire. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I do have, before we leave this, uh, one of the things I learned when I was writing for Roadkill was that in Sweden, if you have a vehicle... It's either top speed limited or it's limited to one gear. Uh, it counts <laughs> as a tractor and you can drive yeah. it wherever you want at whatever age. So there are 12 year olds driving around in Volvos with uh, only first gear. And <laughs> so, do they, they have to go. permanently put it that way or is it like the honor system? Like I, you can't shift out of first gear? I, I don't honestly know. Uh, <laughs> knowing Sweden and knowing how Swedish people do things, there's probably some guy that just takes the gear stack out and only puts first gear back in. Or yeah, something. right. Yeah, that sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. All righty then. Sweden, what a place. What ah, a place. Speaking of uh, generic definition of car, um, yeah. <laughs> Toyota Corona, I really like these. These are just, uh, there's something about these that is so appealing to me. I think, you know, they're, 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 they're jaunty. They sort of have a, a friendly little face. And there's an earnestness to, I mean, I think that these cars were probably received as being kind of toy like and and ridiculously tiny by american standards but you know the japanese didn't know that they made a car that was relevant to the sizes that made sense in their country right and they just did their best to make a good car which they did and uh you know the fact that it a car this size didn't really catch on in in the states until much later is not their fault so um i think that this was well executed by toyota <laughs> Yeah, I agree with that. Uh, we've had one in Lemons, obviously, the uh, the yeah. Sopranos yeah. ran the, yeah. theirs with the stock motor and the yeah. Toyo Glide, which was a yeah. license-built power glide, which right. is hilarious. Yeah. Uh, it was a Chevy two-speed automatic, if you yeah. if you don't speak old car. Uh, <laughs> yeah. And then uh, they put the 1JZ in it and... Right. And all that stuff. and big flares and everything. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We've done a lemons world on that. You can find it uh, elsewhere on this channel. Um, well, the backstory of that, of course, is the judge Phil's first car was famously a 69 Corona, one of this uh, era. And he basically 
issued one of his decrees, which was that if you bring a Corona, you can kind of do whatever you want to it. And meanwhile, the Sopranos were running a third gen Supra with the one Jay-Z. They were always getting penalty laps as they should. Um, and then they, they, they took advantage of the loophole. They put the one J into the Corona after running it stock for one race, which was kind of the best race that it's had. Yeah. Um, and they've sort of uh, popped up here and there ever since with uh, with various teething issues or that yeah. conversion. But it's a yeah. pretty sweet car. I do love how it's kind of got like the mini Lincoln slab side thing happening. Yeah, it's it does. Totally flat on the side. And right. I totally didn't think that. God, you would. It, this car would be just taken to another level if it had Lincoln Continental suicide doors. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody uh, do that. Please. Yeah, <laughs> just that and nothing else. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> uh, all right. Next up. Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. The transport. <laughs> Man, uh, my, uh, my aunt and uncle had a Illumina APV, which is obviously, yeah. of course, the same thing. Yeah. And, like, the first time they rolled up to, you know, Thanksgiving in that, it was just like, whoa. <laughs> uh, they've got a spaceship. Like, <laughs> Well, as we've pointed out before, I mean, I don't know. I don't care which came first, but realistically, like the Previa was this idea done well, and then this was that idea. Done by GM. <laughs> yeah. Done by GM. This is the yeah. transport, of course. Yeah. Not to be uh, confused with the Oldsmobile's silhouette. Silhouette, yeah. 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 And the, uh, the Chevy, Lu- Chevy Lumina APV. Just to confuse people from buying the Lumina. Right. Now, what did APV stand for? <laughs> uh, something, something vehicle. Somebody in the comment <laughs> will be able to tell us, no doubt. But, uh, you know, I, something vehicle. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> General Motors definitely needs to come out with something called the SSV. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just leave it at that. Oh, Jesus. Uh, uh, well, we've had a couple of these in Lemons, of course. Um, these, all of these vehicles, of course, referred to colloquially, colloquially as the Dustbuster van. Yeah. Um, the first gen is way more Dustbustery because this one's got the sort of squared off nose. Uh, the yeah. first ones were were more pointy. Um, Bad Decisions Racing there in uh, the Midwest has my personal favorite version of the Dustbuster van because they had a shoulder mount VHS camcorder mounted to the roll cage like as a GoPro. And it's this yeah. gigantic 40 pound <laughs> thing. And then they would take the tape out of it. In their pits, they had a wood grain TV cabinet with a VCR on top put the tape directly in the VCR and watch the, uh, the day's racing, uh, uh, on Saturday night. That's how so you that do it. Excellent. That is how you do it. I've had never, I've never looked closely at the nose of this second generation. Yeah. It is horrifying. to look at. <laughs> well, it's like a Bonneville of the same era narrowed and, and in Tolland, which, yeah. uh, isn't, isn't a good, uh, effect <laughs> it, it's kind of accidentally mean looking i don't know if you're right. picking up on that like yeah the nostrils out front it looks like yeah. a bowl actually. yeah 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 well but it is definitely the bonneville light stack and the hood just at a different angle i'm pretty right. sure so. right right yeah 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 it, which of course doesn't match the angle of the windshield which they correct you know recycled from the previous version right uh, uh got a, i love pontiac wheels from this era though they got they just right. they were all in i mean yeah. for better or worse mostly worse pontiac <laughs> went big in the late 80s early 90s well there's your catchphrase for better or worse pontiac <laughs> went mostly mostly worse, yeah. went all in yeah <laughs> put that on i think i think all in is at the top and then for better or worse is the uh is the sort of tagline there you go Uh, you're gonna race a pontiac and lemons please bring that on the windshield banner yeah yeah yeah. come up with a whole media package for us (laughs) yeah all right next up oh baby what is happening a crosley a crosley and uh and a clat maybe an oh yeah god like a Chotus or Chotus derivative back there. Yeah. Uh, and then, Weird. and then something yet again, next to it underneath the, uh, in the, in the, on the lift area. What, what magical place is this? Oh God. 
Also, the um, com the single comment <laughs> on the post. Yeah, 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 yeah. You can read that. Uh, I think on the on the video stream, we don't need to repeat it. Uh, I no, I like this. Um, I don't know that we've seen this poster before. Eccentrico Auto. Uh, but oh, there's there no information, no uh, no location, and then uh, as Eric points out, the uh, <laughs> the comment um, pretty much sums things up. But uh, but yeah, boy, Crosley. Crosley really had that feel of like a car you could buy from the Sears catalog. And it was made by the same people that made the wheelbarrow and the, and the garden shed. Yep. Um, there weren't a whole lot of complex curves happening. There was obviously some points like on the back of this car where they're like, wait, it's end of car. How do we <laughs> delineate that? Like, I don't know. Fold it over. Somebody so, called uh, Tommy and it is his day <laughs> off. He needs yeah. to fix this. <laughs> yeah. Um, it doesn't appear to have curved glass given the uh, seam in the middle of the windshield. Yeah. Um, God, speaking of the windshield, if you look through the windshield, there's yet another weird car back there, like a oh, Buick yeah. or something. Oh man, yeah, yeah. with the uh, the pontoon headlights. Uh, yeah, I think that's the Buick with the grill. Um, yeah, yeah. God, what 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 is happening here, and what is wrong with this person? Yeah, uh, man, Crosley's. So I, I love the story of Crosley, and the short version is that the engines were commissioned by the Navy during World War II to run freezers on ships, ah, and some okay. of them were made out of tin <laughs> because <laughs> I don't know why. And then after the war, they're like. I've got it. We should make an car. <laughs> well, you know, pretty much it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, that's like one of the more productive uses of military surplus. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. People did used to race. Uh, I have the weird parts of SCCA history are interesting to me. And there's a class called H mod for under yes. 750 cc's or uh -huh. 850 and yeah. people would take these motors which made about 22 horsepower and like soup them up so there's this whole world of like farmers who built like these death frames with like fiberglass bodies and like 90 horsepower <laughs> and, and a 90 in a 10 and 90 horsepower engine <laughs> yeah in, in the car weighed like 700 pounds and with no rollover protection and they all died but yeah yeah uh, oh god interesting piece of history yeah 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 excellent um also too small for lemons i think the wheelbase is too small right so we do have a uh we do have a wheelbase minimum what is it 82 inches 82 inches yeah. um so yeah probably not um but i don't know get out a tape measure see what see what see what it'll do that's right all right next up oh Ooh, yeah a ranchero this is a later this is a fair lane ranchero i believe uh, as opposed to a falcon ranchero yeah um mid 60s like 66 ish yeah sure something, something like, like that. that um pretty good <laughs> yeah I, there's not much else to add it's great at doing what it does yeah 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 um all right not a whole lot to add on that one yeah. let's move to our final car <laughs> No, no, <laughs> man. I mean, it's just a bummer. <laughs> but you live in a neighborhood where <laughs> your Nissan Quest gets its wheels stolen. Yeah, at the Dollar Tree. I mean, oh, dude. Uh, oh, yeah, it's at the Dollar Tree. <laughs> oh, man. Somebody this has is a bad just week. Depressing. Yeah. 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 You know, I don't know anything about Nissan Quests. I mean, I know that the first gens were essentially like Maximas. Um, you know, it yeah. had the V6, and they were they were smaller, I believe, than like an equivalent Caravan or Previa of the time. Then they came out with this version. And then there's yet another one after this that's even weirder. That's the yeah. one that's got the weird square back end on yeah. it. Super um, extra ugly. These, I think, were mostly Maxima of the era. Yeah. So they had the three and a half liter. The right. ones before that, the first generation, shared a platform with the Mercury Villager. Is yes. The same, is the most random, yeah. Yeah. makes no sense, like, I, I don't know, engineering sharing or whatever. I don't know. Uh, yeah, actually, my uncle had a, a Villager. Um, yeah. Maybe even a wood. There was a wood grain Villager. 
think it's yeah, yeah. a wood grain. Yeah. Um, had no problems with that car, actually. He, he swore yeah. by that villager. Um, uh, we've never had a quest or villager in Lemons, right? No, uh, Sasha had a first gen. Oh, quest. right. Yeah, he cut the roof off. It's a long story, but uh, yeah, yeah. So Sasha, the our, uh, our, our, our resident um, roof cutting off enthusiast, which we don't generally recommend. Yeah. <laughs> Indeed. Uh, yeah, man. Quest, boy. Uh, well, the good thing about a quest and a villager, and really, if you could get them both, is you have such a great baked in theme there. Like, yeah, you know, the uh, uh, King's Quest from the old, the old uh, computer games, any <laughs> yeah. kind of old like D theme is kind yeah, of right, baked into right. it, yeah. Um, I believe there was a Nautica edition villager, which there you know absolutely was. And yeah. I saw one in the junkyard not long ago. <laughs> oh, and why you ruined classic? It was in really great shape, man. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, man. All right. Uh, I think let's get to some awards. Uh, what do I have? I've got the Lemons World, so you've got the Hoopdiest. Why don't you go first? I mean, is I don't know if you could pick a hoopier scene than the Crosley in front of a Lotus with some <laughs> fiberglass thing and a Buick from the mid century there. Yeah. Uh, I don't disagree with that. Um, I probably would have picked this as a, uh, as a uh, lemons build. If um, I didn't think that it would, wouldn't meet the uh, wheel <laughs> base right. minimum. Right. Um, I mean, this is really a good, like I don't have, nearly this much space and he's got a lift and he's got everything going, but this is sort of an illustration of what happens when you do yeah. like, you know, it's sort of a blessing in disguise to not have too much room. Yeah, I agree with that the Crosley on its own, by the way, is the hoopdiest, but the whole scene just adds a right. whole other level to right. it. Well, just when you thought that those vo abandoned Volvos with the spitfire was going to be the hoopdiest, <laughs> this whole scene yeah. comes along and just blows it out of the water. Yeah. Yeah. This is like the, uh, I don't know, Quaalude version, because this does all the parts <laughs> since the 70s. Yeah. So. Some kind of animal medication is involved. <laughs> yeah. um, um. All right. Uh, well, with this eliminated, a um, couple other good uh, choices. Um, as always, we like cars that we've never seen before, so the Quest would be on that. We've seen a Fairlane, but not a Fairlane Ranchero. Corona we've seen, Transport we've seen. I've just got to go with the spectacle of the yeah. slab and waiting yeah. <laughs> with the uh, Argyle town car with the Continental kit. Um, kind of ironic that the town car has to have a kit to uh, make it a Continental. Um, <laughs> but uh, anyway, I mean, this this suggests, I mean, this is probably just on the right side of our 4,200 pound weight limit. Um, it's got the chrome lower rockers. It's got the white vinyl top. It's got the Continental uh Chrome wheels, elbows. God, would elbows pass tech and lemons? Ooh, Ooh. that's a. That's I mean, a I've got a couple question. of concerns about <laughs> yeah. that in a in a road racing context. Um, right. Let's just say maybe don't race it on elbows, but bring a set to drive around the paddock uh, for the uh, for the Saturday night party. I think that's right. Uh, and really, if you were going to bring this to lemons, your preparation is put a roll cage in it. Yes. And put numbers on it. Yeah, that's it. You that's do it. nothing else to that that's, thing. Yeah, is yeah, yeah. absolutely safety perfect. Stuff, yeah. Otherwise, leave it alone. Yep. <laughs> Total slam dunk. That is yeah. that is an IOE contender right there. Yeah. All right, that'll do it for this week. Keep up your Instagram posting with Lemons Car Spotting, and we will talk about it right here. See you next week. Oh man. <laughs> Well, we've never seen a town car of this generation. And uh, as we say about Pontiac, if you're going to do it, go big. <laughs> For better or worse. <laughs> <laughs>